Hello everyone. It is always great to start with an amazing fact and learn something new. So today I have brought some facts for you. Do you know that the heart can perform its function outside the body also? How it is possible? As long as it receives oxygen, it will keep going. Even if it is outside the body or well separated from the rest of the body. Also, the heart can generate its own electrical impulses which causes it to beat. Now, the heart is a muscular organ. It is as big as a fist. It beats 72 times per minute. The bigger bodies have slower heart rates. Strange but true. So, the human body needs a lot of amount of energy to perform its tasks efficiently. So there is a need to ensure that the oxygenated blood and the deoxygenated blood are well separated. Because of that, the humans have four chambered hearts. The four chambers are right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricles. So we have seen the four chambers. Now the heart relaxes and contracts to receive in and pump out the blood respectively. Now the atriums are responsible for receiving the blood whereas the ventricles are responsible for pumping out the blood. Now the right atrium is receiving the deoxygenated blood from the body whereas the left atrium receives the oxygenated blood from the lungs. The right ventricle is responsible for pumping out the deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Whereas, the left ventricle is responsible for pumping out the oxygenated blood to the whole body. So, we have seen the functions of each chamber. So, let's connect these pieces and see exactly how the heart works. Now, first the deoxygenated blood enters into the right atrium through upper and lower vena cavas. Now, these blood enter when the right atrium is relaxed. Now, when the right atrium contracts, it transfers the deoxygenated blood to the right ventricle. At that time, the right ventricle is relaxed. Now, when the right ventricle contracts, it pumps out the deoxygenated blood through the pulmonary arteries to the lungs. In the lungs, the deoxygenated blood gets converted into oxygenated blood. Now, this oxygen-rich blood enters through pulmonary veins to the left atrium. At that time, the left atrium is relaxed. Now the blood, oxygen rich blood has reached to the left atrium. Now the left atrium contracts and the left ventricle is relaxed. So the blood is transferred into the left ventricle. Now the oxygen rich blood is in left ventricle. Now the left ventricle contracts and pumps out the oxygen rich blood through the aorta through all part of the body. So we have seen how the heart functions. Now you have observed that the blood has entered into the heart two times. First in the deoxygenated form and second in the oxygenated form. So we can say that the blood is circulated two times. So the humans like other vertebrates have double circulatory system. You must have also observed that the atrium walls are thinner in comparison to the ventricles. This is because the arteries have to transfer the blood to the nearby chambers only. But the ventricles have to transfer the blood to the different parts of the body. So you can conclude that the arteries have thin walls whereas the ventricles have thick walls. You have also seen that the deoxygenated blood is blue color. But the blood is not blue. Now there are walls that ensure that the blood do not backflow when the atrium or the ventricles contract. Now you must have seen in the diagram that the deoxygenated blood is depicted blue. You must have also seen that the veins in our hands or in our legs appear to be a bit bluish. The blood becomes dark in color because of the presence of carbon dioxide but it, but it is not in blue color. So we have seen the functioning of heart and the different chambers involved in the working. So now let's have a look on the heart of other animals. We have seen in the earlier videos that the higher energy demand leads to the chamber separations. So higher the energy demands, more is the number of chambers. Such as 
birds and mammals they are having more chambers because they need energy to maintain their body temperature but there are also some animals which do not need these chambers because they can bear the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood like reptiles and amphibians they maintain their temperature according to the environment there are also fishes which have only two chambers that is when the blood enters it directly goes into the gills from where it gets oxygenated and get transferred to the body so we can say that the blood goes only once through the whole body of the fish so we have seen the different heart or the circulatory system of the animals and the human beings so let's see the various tubes and vessels which are involved in the functioning of the circulatory system now mainly there are two vessels or two tubes which we say arteries and veins let's understand them by drawing a different table between them now here we have arteries and veins now the arteries have the function of carrying the oxygenated blood from the heart to the different parts of the body whereas the veins carry the deoxygenated blood from whole part of the body to the heart now since the arteries are receiving the uh, blood from the heart it is in under high pressure but in veins since it is collecting the whole blood from the body and then giving it to the heart it is under low pressure now the arteries do not have walls because it have to transfer its blood from the heart to the different parts of the body but the veins have walls to prevent the back flow because it is carrying the blood from whole parts of the body to the heart now the arteries have thick elastic muscular walls because the blood flowing in arteries is under high pressure whereas in veins it has non elastic muscles because the blood is not flowing under so much pressure at last we see that pulmonary artery is the only artery which carry the deoxygenated blood whereas the pulmonary vein is the only vein which carry the oxygenated blood which we have seen in the functioning of heart so we have seen the differences between arteries and veins till now you must be aware that blood is very important to us so it's every drop needs to be saved and where this needs to be saved we have platelets in action now these platelets help in clotting of blood during injuries because if there was not no such as uh, platelets then the blood would have flown out and we could have died so these platelets help in clotting of blood and minimizing the loss of blood so we have seen in this video what is heart what is circulatory system how our heart works so we will be seeing the lymphatic system in our next video